Hello and welcome to the Saratoga Power Lunch. I'm Yan Zhao, the mayor of the city of Saratoga. I'm excited to be holding this new monthly webinar series on the second Tuesday of the month from 12 p.m. to 12.30 p.m. So we can all learn about Saratoga in bite-sized pieces. Today's webinar will feature State Assembly Member Evan Lowe and the Santa Clara County District Attorney, Jeff Rosen, and we'll be talking about the effort to stop Asian hate. Currently, almost half the population of Saratoga is of Asian descendant. Given the diversity of our community, it may su surprise some of to know discrimination against the Asian American Pacific Islander, AAPI community, has always existed even here. When I first ran for Saratoga City Council, someone told me I would never get elected because I had a foreigner's name. You would think the situation would have gotten better with time, but unfortunately, it did not. In 2018, I ran for the city council again. As I was canvassing neighborhoods one day, a gentleman opened his door and saw me with a campaign flyer. He quickly told me he would only vote for a white person because before he shut the door in my face. Another time, a person shouted at me to move to Cupertino if I wanted to run for office because they believed Cupertino was a more diverse and welcoming community. This hate against the API community increasing around the world during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Saratoga City Council unanimously passed a resolution denouncing violence against Asian Americans in March. The next morning, a Saratoga resident called me to say he was glad to see the council approve the resolution, but we needed to, to do more than just that, and he was right. I felt inspired to organize a rally calling to stop AAPI hate, which was held at Saratoga City Hall on March 27th and attended by many Saratoga and Santa Clara County residents. I never imagined a rally like that would be necessary or that I would have the courage to organize myself. But this cause has become so important. It was clear, clearly the only choice. For those of you who do not know me, I'm an engineer by trade. I used to work in front of a computer all day and it was always nice and quiet. I have almost never raised my voice in my life. Even when I experienced discrimination firsthand, I still chose to remain quiet, hoping one day it would get better. I now realize that staying silent will never make the hate go away. If I'm the mayor of Saratoga and I still feel fear discrimination as I walk down the street in my city, how can I tell residents our city is safe? I have to do more to change things going forward. I truly hope that has happened to me will never be experienced by my children. We have to speak up and ask our community to stand in solidarity with us. Saratoga is a small community with a strong sense of a community. These difficult times are an opportunity to rally together to demonstrate what it truly means to be a good neighbor. Together, we can build the community we want to see and we can protect and celebrate our diverse melting pot. I'm thrilled to have both Assembly Member Evan Lowe and District Attorney Jeff Rosen with us here today to talk about their own experiences and how we can work together to stop AAPI hate. Assembly Member Lowe was elected to represent Assembly District 28 in 2014. And at that time, he was the youngest Asian American legislator ever elected to the state assembly. Assembly member Lowe represents Saratoga, Campbell, Cupertino, Las Gatos, Monte Serino, and the areas of West San Jose, Willow Glen, Cambrian, and Almaden Valley in San Jose. Assembly member Lowe is the vice chair of the Asian and the Pacific Islander Legislative Caucus, which was formed to represent and advocate for the interests of the AAPI community. Before he was elected to the state assembly, Evan was a member of the Campbell City Council member 
and the first Asian American to serve on the Campbell City Council. Jeff Rosen became the district attorney in 2011 from gang homicides to human trafficking to organized cyber and high-tech crime. The district attorney office prosecutes tens of thousands of cases in court each year and handles thousands of others outside the court each year to efficiently achieve accountability and justice. Under Mr. Rosen's leadership, the office is more diverse than before. With more than 50% uh, of the women comprising 50% of prosecutors and uh, African-American, Latino, Asian-American, LGBT individuals representing more than 40% of the prosecutors. Thank you both for joining us today. We'll begin with remarks with Assembly Member Evan Lowe, followed by District Attorney Jeff Rosen. Then we'll proceed uh, to questions from our audience members and uh, that were collected during the registration process. So Assembly Member Lowe, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you very much, Mayor Zhao. It's good to see you and be here with our district attorney. Um, first of all, thank you very much for your uh, solidarity in organizing the Stop AAPI Hate rally. And you're always so uh, straightforward when it comes to talking about how uh, you felt uncomfortable uh, that, yes, you're serving as mayor, but this culturally isn't part of our DNA to organize, to rally, to be on the streets. But we realize the importance of civic engagement in social justice. And I just commend you for doing so, that you brought out a, a wide variety of uh, demographics and people to help celebrate the values and culture, not just in Saratoga, but in Silicon Valley. And of course, this opportunity for you to be proactive in helping to bring stakeholders to have dialogue and for us to listen. At the end of the day, the three of us on this panel today, uh, we are here to listen and serve the people. And uh, I'm very fortunate to also join our district attorney. Our district attorney um, probably doesn't know this because I'm just gonna mention this today because it just happened. But there are a number of pieces of legislation that we discuss on a regular basis uh, informally from other legislators. So we have different opportunities for legislators to walk and talk about different issues. I'm part of a group that walks at 6 a.m. in the morning around the Capitol, there's about six of us. And then after three uh, laps with about three miles around the Capitol, we get coffee. And of course, we talked about a number of issues that percolates with respect to public safety. And the legislator representing Oxnard and Ventura we were talking about some legislation and she said that she talked to her own local district attorney and her district attorney gave a position on this piece of legislation to which the district attorney said, well, I'm more like the Jeff Rosen uh, position on this issue, uh, which gave the sense to the group of six legislators. Uh, Half of us knew what that meant, and the other half were new and freshmen, provided an opportunity to say, well, what does that mean? What does it mean to be Jeff Rosen-like? Uh, but that just goes to show the impact that our district attorney has statewide and beyond. And so we're fortunate to have him as our district attorney. He's been a solid leader and a champion of our Asian Pacific Islander community and has been with us in the trenches. So we're so fortunate to have someone ensure that we stop AAPI hate. And it's not just empty rhetoric. So many of us are hurting and we demand, we are demanding action. It, this is righteous anger. And our district attorney hears us and he's in solidarity. So I, I thank you for the opportunity. And I know that we'll be hearing from him as to some options and um, best practices to which we can help protect ourselves, but then demand more from our government. Thank you so much for your remarks, Evan. Uh, you have been an exemplary leader, blazing new paths for the members of the Asian American community. Thank you so much. Uh, District Attorney Rosen, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for inviting me, Madam Mayor. It's always a pleasure to, uh, to work with you and, and to work with my good friend, Assembly Member Evan Lowe. We've worked on a number of uh, legislative issues together and, and we've seen each other quite, quite often frequently, um, particularly at rallies around the Bay Area to, to call out hatred against Asian Americans and, and to call for action. So I know there's a number of, of questions that, that I'm gonna answer later, but let me just say, I place great importance on vigorously prosecuting hate crimes against anyone, uh, Asian Americans, African Americans, Jews, Latinos, LGBTQ. Um, I think that a hate crime is a crime against three. It's a crime against that individual victim. 
it's a crime against everyone in that victim's community. Because unfortunately, the way we're wired as human beings is, is fear spreads very quickly. Uh, empathy and love seem to spread a little more slowly, uh, although those are, are very important values. But fear, when one member of a community is attacked, everyone in that community feels it. And then finally, a hate crime is, is a crime against all of us as Americans who are entitled to equal and fair and respectful treatment under the law. These are the principles that our country was founded on and, and they're aspirational goals. Our country has not always uh, fully lived up to these goals, but I think part of what we're doing this afternoon and what you, um, Madam Mayor, did with, with your running for city council and the rally that you had against hate crimes is helping to encourage all of us as Americans to live up to those values that our country was founded on. So thank you so much for inviting me to the Saratoga Power Lunch. Love that title, Power Lunch. Thank you so much, Jeff. The work of your office is extremely important to the API community. Um, so I'm going to uh, start the question just before today's webinar, we ask our attendees to, sub to submit questions. So the first question is, had the city of Saratoga experienced anti-Asian hate incidents? If so, how many? So I think I got this from our um, sheriff's office. So I'm just going to answer this briefly and perhaps you can add. Um, reports of the hate crime in Saratoga are extremely rare. There have been no, report, no reported hate crimes in the last five years. However, based on many, based on my own experience that I shared earlier, I can say that anti-Asian incidents do occur here in Saratoga. I don't know if you have any um, reported incidents that uh, I, I didn't check with you, but I, I heard this from our sheriff's office. So is that, is that true? We don't have any in Saratoga. Well, Ma Ma Madam Mayor, what I would say is that Number one, there's a, a difference between a hate incident and a hate crime. And what you described that happened to you when you were running for mayor is what we would call a hate incident, uh, meaning it's not something that we can prosecute criminally, uh, but it's something that's still very disturbing, of course, and, and bothers not only you, but members of the Asian American community. You're not the only person in Saratoga that's probably experienced something like that. Uh, but the, there's a difference between a hate incident and a hate crime. And a, a quick rule of thumb is words alone are generally going to be a hate incident, but words coupled with an action like punching someone or vandalizing their property or spitting on them or trying to rape them, uh, that would, if that's motivated by bias against that victim because of how the victim looks, because they're Asian, because they're black, because they're LGBTQ, those would be hate crimes. And, and those examples that I gave were not hypothetical. I'm giving specific examples of hate crimes from our county. They were not in Saratoga, they were in uh, Mountain View and San Jose, and they involved in one incident, one incident spitting, another incident uh, yelling and screaming at an Asian couple, Vietnamese couple, and then the perpetrator taking his hand and making it look like a gun and threatening to kill them before bystanders intervened. And then there was a case a few months ago, maybe a month ago in downtown San Jose in the train station where a woman was thrown to the ground, uh, a Filipina woman, uh, horrible slurs uttered against her. The man tried to rape her and he was chased off by bystanders. So th those are the hate crimes. Uh, in our county last year, we had 14 hate crimes against all different ethnicities. That was the most hate crimes that we had prosecuted in the last 10 years. So while that number 14 is not a huge number, it still represents a huge increase over what we saw. And this year in 2021, we have already filed 10 hate crimes and the year is not half over yet. So I think it's good for us to have this discussion to try, because as much as I'm going to vigorously prosecute hate crimes that are committed, I know what we all want is for there to be fewer hate instances and fewer hate crimes. Thank you, District Attorney Wilson. Assemblymember Lowe, would you like to add anything? 
Yes. I'm, in fact, if I might just ask our district attorney, because he is the subject matter expert in this field. But think about this again, for those who are watching that you're seeing these local incidents and local crimes occurring. And the question is basic, which is to say that, do we need to change the law, strengthen the laws? Do we help need to empower through the legislative process, help empower our district attorney so that they can prosecute accordingly and keep our community safe? And my question for our district attorney is such that while we that number is so small, that 13 uh, um, hate crimes uh, that you've outlined, we just know just this visually, it's a viral video going around about two elderly Asian American women who were stabbed. And the prosecutor in that area of jurisdiction is not prosecuting this as a hate crime. So that would not count to your third our 13 here. But I think anyone watching that just say, we cannot just say, well, that's just the way it goes. And there seems to be an overlapping theme here with the perpetrators. And so my question to, to you is in collaboration as we're having discussions, what can we do to keep our community safe? Do we need to strengthen laws on the books so we can close some of these quote unquote loopholes? What can we look for to legislative solutions? I think in, in terms of legislation, one thing that would be helpful is to know the scope of the problem or to have a better sense of what the scope of the problem is. And right now, hate crimes and hate instances are both underreported and undercounted. So let me explain what I mean by that. Number one, hate crimes and hate instances are underreported, meaning the victim, like let's give the examples that, that Mayor Zhao gave, the victim doesn't want to call the police about this. Why doesn't, why doesn't the victim want to call the police? Well, um, it's not a big deal. I just want to fit in. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I did something wrong. So, so these crimes are very underreported. And for instance, in a case that we filed in Mountain View where a Chinese American man was having lunch on Castro Street and uh, a woman walked by him and started screaming terrible slurs at him and she then spit on him and the spitting on him made this a crime, that victim did not want to report to the police. It was only the, the bystanders and people that were having lunch with him who, ca who called the police. And once the police were called, then he cooperated. But, but if not for those bystanders, it never would have been reported. So, so one is they're underreported, but there's another way in which they're undercounted, which is if the police don't solve the crime, it's not counted by the DA's office. So we keep stats when the police bring us cases that where they've solved it and they say, here's the defendant, um, here's what he did and then we can file the charge. If they don't solve the crime, like somebody spray paints terrible slurs on a Buddhist temple, but the person is not caught, it won't be captured in those statistics. So I think one thing that might be of interest to the, the California legislature is, is there some uh, requirement that they can put into law that police departments have to keep track of, of the hate crimes that they don't solve and also the hate instances because sometimes people will say to the police, I just got into a car accident and the other person started yelling at me and tell anti-Asian things or anti-Black things. And I think, is that a crime? And depending on the circumstances, it may be a crime, it may not, but we certainly would like to know even when people are yelling these ethnic slurs, because I think we all recognize that if we don't address the words, the ethnic slurs in the words, then that can lead to the physical violence. So maybe um, assembly member, there may be some legislation around um, having police track hate instances and hate crimes that we don't solve to give us a better picture of the extent of the problem. Yeah, so certainly the data collection is, I think something that we're trying to tackle um, uh, to miss best empower localities to do the type of enforcement and engagement accordingly based on the data that's given. Um, but uh, similarly, as you well know, that our co uh, community is not monolithic by any means and that there is a segment that are looking to um, prosecute accordingly and to punish those accordingly. Um, and that so much of the conversation is um, not towards helping the victim. Um, but that's a conversation, of course, in public debate and public sphere, which I know you're readily aware of too. So I just share that because um, there's not an easy solution to this, but I think it's important that we have 
frank and honest conversations. That's why I appreciate this opportunity, Mary Zell. No, Assembly Member Lowe, I really want to echo what you're saying, which is I sometimes think that we're in a period right now where while we're paying a lot of attention to uh, individuals who commit crimes and trying to understand why they commit crimes and how we can help them so they don't commit crimes in the future, um, I think that we need to remember the voice of the victims of crimes and make sure that we're holding defendants accountable for their crimes and then also helping those crime victims recover and get back on their feet. Um, one of the interesting things about the hate crime law in California is that if a perpetrator is convicted of a hate crime, in addition to jail or prison, that perpetrator, the judge is encouraged to require that perpetrator to do community service or take educational courses about the, the victim that he, that he committed this crime against. Because I think that gets to our idea of uh, trying to take somebody who is a hate crime perpetrator today and helping that person become an upstander, a bystander in the future that will not allow hate crimes to happen. So that, that's a unique thing about the law in California, but I definitely share your concerns that we wanna, we wanna focus on the hardworking, innocent men and women who, uh, of Asian descent who are being targeted and attacked and do everything we can to, to prevent the attacks from happening. And if they do happen, to support that victim and make them feel uh, welcome, respected, and, and an integral part of our community. That's great, thank you. Thank you, Assemblymember Mo and uh, District Attorney Jeff Rosen. Next question, um, what should someone do if they are the victim of an API hate? Uh, District Attorney Rosen, would you like to start? Just very, very, I'll say very quickly, and I know Assemblymember Lowe has some ideas about this as well, but if somebody th believes that they're uh, a victim, that they've been targeted for a crime because they are Asian, they should absolutely call the police, whether it's the sheriff in Saratoga or, it, or the police department in San Jose or Mountain View or wherever, they should absolutely call the police and, um, and the police should investigate it and make a report and document it. And if that's not happening, if the police don't arrive for some reason or don't do a report, then they should call the DA's office and we will, we will assist and uh, you know, find out why the police department didn't do that. And, and if necessary, we're happy to take a report and do an investigation ourselves. Thank you, District Attorney uh, Rosen. Uh, Assembly Member Lowe? Yeah, the only other thing I would just add is that there is the stop aapihate.org for data collection um, to ensure that there can be in language access and support. So many different community-based organizations are regional and localized. Uh, so we hope to empower them. And actually, we just uh, received a state funding to help support so many different community-based organizations who are doing work in this space in that localized approach. As you well know, there are oftentimes a little bit of hesitancy. District Attorney Rosen talked about that, whether it be cultural issues around language access and otherwise. So we hope to develop strong relationships with community-based organizations as they are on the ground in localized communities. Thank you, Assembly Member Lowe. Um, next question. Uh, do you think the action towards Asian countries, especially China at the federal level, have increased hate against Asians? Assembly Member Lowe, would you like to take this question first? You know, I'll just share the, this a very personal uh, observation on this that, um, you know, uh, the, the notion of American exceptionalism, especially as one G, number one in GDP, the United States, and number two as China, and China eventually, at one point when China becomes number one in GDP, the, the notion of the American exceptionalism and the psyche, what will that happen during this time? And we've seen in our history, our American history, what happens during the trade wars and the rhetoric coming from the previous administration. So I think that there are some unique challenges that exist on the horizon for the domestic conversation to Asian Pacific Islanders, specifically with respect to your question about the tension that exists between the United States and China. And by the way, the distinction between those who are ch of Chinese descent here may be lost 
lost on those individuals who may just cast and thinking all Asians look the same and you must be all Chinese. So if we look at that of what happened during the Japanese internment camp or the hate during who killed Vincent Chin on the auto workers and that of the Wuhan virus, we're seeing iterations of this uh, between that of federal uh, elected officials, senators who have introduced legislations to ban ban international students coming from China because they are quote unquote potentially spies. So this type of rhetoric has um, significant harm to our communities. And what's important is that we also speak truth that yes, we must hold other countries accountable to making sure that we are as patriotic as possible and supporting our domestic programs. But what's also important is that we understand the nuance of these issues that words matter and that we must speak truth to what these words actually matter and get to that of the specifics on government while also not casting aspersions to a wide variety of people, which is why, again, it's so important as we celebrate May as Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month, we must see the solidarity of our Jewish brothers and sisters, our black brothers and sisters, LGBT women, all of the above, that we must stand stronger together because at the end of the day, uh, this is about the solidarity and basic equity that we must be afforded in the United States. Thank you, Assembly Member Lowe. Uh, District Attorney Rosa, would you like to add anything? All I would add is uh, I completely agree with what Assembly Member Lowe said in terms of when we started to see a spike in instances of hate and hate crimes against Asians, uh, definitely uh, after the coronavirus last year uh, came to this country we, we and we had a we had rhetoric from Washington calling it the the kung fu flu and the, the Chinese virus that definitely uh, gave license to some bigoted people in our communities to, to yell at Asians and and to commit crimes against Asians because of that and so I think it really is words matter and, uh, and if we're very the more careful we are with our speech, the more careful we'll be with our actions. And I very much agree that, as you can see from this presentation, uh, an American can, can who, who know, an American can look like anything. An American can be black, can be white, Hispanic, Jewish, Asian, gay, like an American looks like everything. And I think the more we embrace that, the happier we're gonna be, the more productive we're gonna be and a better country we're gonna be. Thank you, District Attorney Rosen. Um, our final question, what can community members do to stop API hate? Uh, Assembly member, would you like to respond to it? Well, I think you know this very well too, Mayor Zhao, which is that we want to help promote civic engagement and active citizenry, that we must be involved in our communities, whether or not it's joining boards and commissions in the city of Saratoga, or volunteering with Rotary, Kiwanis, Lions, the Chambers of Commerce, neighborhood associations. There's so many different uh, opportunities for us to be active citizens. And I think that's what's important. And the notion of that, of being an active citizens also means that we are not bystanders, that we must see something and then we say something and that we must look out for one another. And that's what it means to be an active citizen, to be invested in each other's shared success. So I hope that this provides an opportunity for us to think about what it means to be a contributing member of society, that the definition of success here in Silicon Valley is not just simply making a great deal of resources and money, uh, but rather what kind of uh, uh, mark that we wish to make in our society for the future, for our children, for, and for our neighbors too. So let us be a call to action for those wishing to serve in the public realm uh, to be involved in any volunteer capacity, whether it be your PTA or your school site council, um, or joining the board of your own HOA, uh, being involved and in being readily aware, because as you know, even joining the boards of HOAs, you're vigilant on talking and seeing different activities around your neighborhood associations and HOAs. And that's just being involved in, frankly, knowing who your neighbor is and just understanding that we uh, are a stronger community together. Thank you, Assembly Member Lowe. Um, District Attorney Joseph, would you like to uh, add anything? Maybe I scared him off. Oh, did we lose the sticker attorney? He heard enough of me talking. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, um, I guess uh, he's offline, huh? I don't see him uh, online no more. 
Well, thank you so much, uh, Assembly Member Lowe and the District Attorney Rosen for joining us today. I am so grateful to both of you for the work you have done to encourage and to protect the Asian American community. A recording of this webinar will be posted on the city website. You can also find the topics for the upcoming webinars there. Our next Saratoga Power Lunch will be on Tuesday, June 8 at 12 p.m. We'll be discussing crime trends in Saratoga with the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office. I look forward to seeing you there. Looks like. Uh, go ahead. It looks, like our, it looks like our district attorney has uh, some final, final thoughts. He was he was quite tired of hearing me talk and pontificating. So uh, he's back to join us now. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you. Something happened with my connection. I, all I was going to add, I, I, I agreed with what, what uh, Assembly Member Lowe was saying about more civic engagement. And he mentioned bystanders. And I, I'm, maybe this was already said, but um, but there are there are community-based organizations that offer bystander training, and I believe Aki Asian Americans for Community Involvement does, and it's to get some training about what to do if you see this happening to someone else. Somebody's yelling slurs at them or pushing and shoving them, and and yelling slurs. Like, what should you do in that situation? And just very quickly, I mean, one very powerful thing you can do is literally to go and stand next to that person. That sends a very, when I say that person, I mean the victim. That sends a very powerful welcoming message to that victim. It says to the perpetrator, we don't agree with this. This is not welcome here. And that, and it's also a way to de-escalate and defuse the situation. Obviously, if something very violent is happening that you see, please call the police. I don't want to endanger you. But I think that for instances of words uh, that, that literally going and standing with the victim is, uh, is a very powerful and human and American thing to do. So I, I would suggest that. And I, I just wanna thank you again, Mayor Zhao, for organizing this. And it's always good to be in conversation and dialogue with uh, Assembly Member Lowe. Thank you. Assembly Member Lowe, would you like to have a final remarks or before well, we end? Thank you for your, for your leadership and happy Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Well, thank you so much again, both uh, to Assembly Member Lowe and District Attorney for joining uh, us today. And uh, thank you so much for your wonderful work that you have been doing. So we really appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Good day.